And I'll spotlight myself. That's what I, every teacher wants to do. Um, who can remember, who can share with us what they remember about where Jessie's going to go with Megan Moriarty? Where is she planning on going, Kislan? I actually forgot the whole <laughs> chapter, so I don't remember. Oh, anybody remember where Jesse's going with Megan Moriarty at the end of the chapter? And actually, Megan invited Evan too, but Jesse was like, nah, he has plans. It's anybody too... remember? You remember, Kislan? Yeah. They okay. went to the, they're going to go to the beach. They're planning on going to the beach. And what about Megan's money? She gave it to Jesse to do what with? To um to go to they wanted to donate it to who? To um a shelter. Right. Um the animal rescue. So yeah. kind of the same thing as a shelter. So we're gonna see, is Jesse gonna be honest about that? Is she going to Donate the money. Is she going to use it for the lemonade war? What's going to happen? Chapter nine is negotiation. Let's read. Negotiation. What's she under my eye? Now, a method of bargaining so that you can reach an agreement. I know about that. Evan looked up from the marble track he was building when Jesse walked in the front door. She looked hot really sweaty. She looked happy, really happy, like she just got an A plus or like, like she just won a war. What are you smiling for? Asked Evan, holding a marble at the top of the track. No reason. Jessie put her hands on her hips and stared at Evan. She looks like one of those goofy yellow smiley faces, all mouth. Well, quit looking at me, would you? It's creepifying. You look like you're going to explode or something. Evan dropped the marble into the funnel. It raced to the track, picking up speed around the curves. It passed the flywheel, sending the flag spinning, then fell into the final drop. When it reached the end of the track, it went sailing through the air like a beautiful silver bird and fell short. The marble landed on the ground instead of the bullseye cup. Evan muttered under his breath and adjusted the position of the cup. Raise the end of the track, said Jesse. You'll get more locked. Agrin Evan looked at her angrily. The marble had fallen into the cup the last 10 times he'd done it. Why did it have to fall short the one time she was watching? Don't tell me what to do, he said. Why was she smiling like that? I didn't tell you what to do, she said. I just made a suggestion. Take it or leave it. She turned to walk up the stairs. Grunt Meister Fink, she tossed over her shoulder. Evan threw a marble at her disappearing back, but missed by a mile. Well, he hadn't really been aiming anyway. He just wanted that feeling of throwing something. He'd been feeling the need to throw something these past four days. Grump might, oh, Grump Minister Fink. That was the name of a character he'd made up when he was six and Jesse was five. That was back when mom and dad were fighting a lot and Evan and Jesse just had to get out of the house. They'd scramble up the climbing tree. Evan had his branch, Jesse had hers and waited out. Sometimes they had to wait for a long time. And once when Jesse was thirsty and impatient and cranky, Evan had said, be quiet and I'll tell you the story about Grump Minister Fink. Grump Minister Fink was a man who was a cranky, who was cranky and mean and made everybody miserable. But deep down, he wanted people to love him. It's just that every time he tried to do something nice, it turned out all wrong. Evan made up a lot of stories about Mr. Fink in that tree. But after dad left, there weren't any more stories to tell. No one in the whole world besides Jesse and Evan knew about Grump Minister Fink. And Evan hadn't thought about him in years. Hey, he said sharply. He heard Jesse stop at the top of the stairs, but she didn't come down.
Do you want to call this whole thing off? He asked. What? She shouted. This, this lemonade war, he said. Call it off. Yeah, he said. Just say nobody wins and nobody loses. Jessie walked down the stairs and stood with her arms crossed. Evan looked at her. He missed her. He had spent the whole day, the third to last day before school started, by himself. It stunk. It totally stunk. If Jessie had been around and they hadn't been fighting with each other, they could have played air hockey or made pretzels or built a marble track with twice as many gizmos that launched the marble into the bullseye cup every time. Jessie was very precise. She was good at getting the marble to go into the cup. What do you say? Jessie looked puzzled. I don't know, she said, frowning. You see, Megan kind of, well, she... Evan felt his face go hot. Megan Moriarty. Every time he thought of her, his throat got all squeezed and scratchy. It was like the allergic reaction he got if he accidentally ate a shrimp. You told Megan Moriarty about everything? He asked, feeling itchy all over. No. Well, what everything, asked Jessie. Evan thought she looked like a fish caught in a net. You did. And suddenly, Evan knew exactly why Jessie had been smiling when she walked in the door and why she didn't want to call off the war. She had done it again. She had figured out some way to show the world just how stupid he was. Like the time he'd come home with 100% on his weekly spelling quiz, the only time he'd ever gotten every word right to find that Jesse had won a statewide poetry writing contest. He'd thrown his paper in the trash without even telling his mom. What was the point? Evan didn't know how, but somehow Jesse'd found a way to earn more than $103. She was going to beat him, and Megan Moriarty knew all about it. And she would tell everyone else. All the girls would know. Paul would know. And Ryan and Adam and Jack. Scott Spencer would know. Can you believe it? He lost to his little sister, the one that's going to be in our class. What a loser. You know what? He said, pushing past her. Forget it. Just forget I said anything. The war is on. O N. Prepare to die. And that is the end of chapter nine. Chapter nine was fairly short, but I do not think we have time for all of chapter 10 before it's time for us to take a break. As much as I'd love to read it, we're gonna take a pausey pause. And 